everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today we've got a news video for the upcoming Wheel of Time television adaptation, and there is tons of news to get to. We've got everything from casting, leaked audition tapes, some clips from Amazon, filming schedules, and much more. Before hopping into the news, let me quickly thank the channel's sponsor, NordVPN. You can find a link in the description to get a major discount on VPN services, which everyone should have. We'll talk more about them a little bit later, though. Let's go ahead and get a spoiler warning up. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, carrying major spoilers, but only through the Great Hunt. If you haven't finished the second book of the series, go finish those books and then come back and watch the video. You have been warned. So we have a ton of news to get to, but let's start with something that's been speculated about, but has now been confirmed. Filming resumed on the Wheel of Time on September 7th, as confirmed by Wattseries.com. You're going to hear quite a bit of information that comes from Wattseries.com in this video, by the way. If you are someone intent on following the news as it's released, a great website for you to bookmark would be www.wattseries.com. I'll have it linked in the description, as well as their social media. But in this case, if you were not aware, production on the Wheel of Time halted in March due to the coronavirus after roughly seven months of filming. At the point that filming was stopped, they had completed primary filming of the first six episodes of the season, and now they're back to complete the final two. Filming is said to have a projected completion date of mid-December, but I would imagine that that includes some reshoots of the past footage as well. We know that they were able to complete a lot of the post-production work on the episodes that were filmed, so much so that David Buckley is currently scoring the show, something that's typically done once all of the editing is complete. It is not a huge step to say that anything that needs completed in reshoots will be taking place right now with the filming of the last two episodes. We know that Siren Donnelly is the person tapped to direct the final two episodes of the season. He's an Irish television and film director that is most known for his work on The Vikings, The Tudors, Camelot, Krypton, and Altered Carbon which I think is an excellent show, by the way. With the filming resuming, Rosamund Pike commented on the series and the production in an interview posted on The Collider. I'll have the full interview linked in the description of the video, but let's take a look at a short clip of some of Rosamund's comments about The Wheel of Time. Uh, Rosamund, I have to ask real quick, uh, how is Wheel of Time going? Uh, have you wrapped? What can you tease fans of that material? We are back up and in production, which is very exciting. Um, we, we're a week into sh actual shooting again, having stopped back on March the 13th. And everybody is really committed. And, you know, we've got the most astonishing protocols in place. And we're trying to, you know, keep a very, very big production running. You know, we've got 500 people who we're trying to keep healthy and deliver, you know, the same standard. And it's not easy. It's not easy shooting in these times. And, and, and we've got amazing amazing things in place and it's you know we're all working with new with new a new reality you know with 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 this sort of distancing effect as you know that the the, the masks and, and and social distancing you know and, and film is 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 not conducive to those protocols you know people are work closely and um and it's in it's very you know we work closely together it's it's very personal it's very hands-on all those things are having to be reevaluated. but um i mean we are all so happy to be back in these characters who sort of we you know it was like we were we were just cut dead in march and we were right in the thick of the you know this amazing epic journey so back in the saddle literally <laughs> a couple of the things that stand out here to me are the fact that this production is so massive let's think about this there are over 500 people working on the set literally think about that that's incredible Seeing Rosamund's face light up when she was asked about the Wheel of Time was also really refreshing to me as well. She seems genuinely excited for it in her descriptions as epic. Do nothing to make me less excited. Uh, I know there isn't a ton there in the interview, but an actress of her caliber that seems genuinely excited about the project she's working on does give me some hope. Another piece of information regarding the filming is the fact that Kai Alexander is not only in Prague for the filming of the first episodes as men, as was reported last month, but her management company accidentally leaked that this was her first time filming as the character. Now this has some interesting implications as to the timeline of the show and some of the changes that might flesh themselves out. I'm gonna get into this more at the end of the video in terms of speculation for the plot because there are some other things that we're gonna to get to in this news video that might add more to my theory. 
but we'll talk about that later. But it does seem on the surface that we aren't going to get men in Berlon, but rather later in the story. The Berlon scenes would have likely finished filming early on, and if this is indeed Kai's first time on set as men, then it's possible that Berlon might get cut altogether, or at least men's appearance in Berlon. Again, we'll talk more about this later in the video. Watt series has also announced the discovery of two new filming locations for the show. The first is a walled town named Terezin, to the north of Prague, the filming was centered around the upper water gate, which is a pedestrian entrance to the town. Just looking at the pictures, it doesn't seem overly ornate or anything, and it's kind of quite utilitarian, so I would guess that this is probably Faldara, or at least an entrance to Faldara. The second location that was discovered to be a part of the filming is Hozavov Fortress. Again, if you think I butchered that, I actually asked my uh, friend from Prague, and he told me to pronounce it that way, so I blame him if it's wrong. But this is another fortress town that's near Prague. Watt series reports that the filming was around the same time frame as the Terezin, so it's possible that these two separate locations are being filmed for the same location on screen. My guess is still Fardara based on the pictures. What do you guys think? So in addition to production news, there are some other things out there worthy of discussion. First of all, let's talk about another Amazon series that's super popular right now in The Boys. The Boys season one released last year in the typical binge format that happens with streaming services like Amazon. But this year with season two, The Boys producer Eric Kripke decided to have the show released weekly after dropping the first three episodes up front. His reasoning for this change was that they wanted to give fans the opportunity to talk about each episode of the show and generate buzz before each episode came out. Obviously, if you watch my channel, this is something that I've campaigned for for the Wheel of Time. I'd like to see a weekly release because it gives us the chance to get other people in to watch the show and it gives the show a longer lifespan in terms of buzz. However, The Boys has gotten some backlash to that decision. Despite the second season being very highly reviewed by critics and viewers alike, it's actually a really good show, many viewers have been upset by the change to the release schedule, and they have review bombed The Boys in various platforms with their distaste for the decision. Many people were upset by it. So does this backlash give me any trepidation about The Wheel of Time going for a weekly release over giving us all eight episodes at once? Not really, but let me explain why. First of all, The Boys set a precedent that it would be a binge-worthy show in season one. Many fans were unaware that they were planning on changing the format for season two, and I think this was the primary reason for upset fans. If Wheel of Time goes for a weekly release from season one, there aren't any precedents set and fans know what to expect. Secondly, The Wheel of Time is a different type of show than The Boys. This is an epic fantasy story that's gonna suck people into the world and give fans stuff to talk about in a very similar way that Game of Thrones did. I know that fans like myself have been advocating for weekly releases, hoping that we can get people to watch the show and have conversations about it. It's gonna be a lot harder for us to generate buzz for a show if it's saying, hey, you have to commit to watching eight episodes of this, and it's only being talked about for a brief period of time for a couple of weeks, that's gonna be harder. The Boys doesn't have the massive public following that The Wheel of Time did prior to its release. It's based off a series of popular graphic novels but nothing at the level of the popularity of The Wheel of Time, and certainly not with a huge fan community already built around it. Because of this, Wheel of Time is better positioned to do well in a weekly format. And lastly, for those of you who don't think that people want a weekly format, and that people just won't watch shows that are released like that, look no further than The Mandalorian on Disney+. It was a weekly release on a streaming service that brought in huge audiences and lots of buzz week after week, due to its popularity. These types of shows can be successful, and I think Wheel of Time would be better served to a weekly release. But what do you all think? Absolutely make sure to tell me in the comments of the video. Now, while we're on the subject of streaming services, if you were not aware, most streaming services offer different content based on where you live in the world. And this content is always changing. Certain movies and television shows may be streaming in the US, but not in your country and vice versa. Now there's a super easy way around this if you aren't aware, and it just so happens to be a really, really smart and safe thing for you to do anyway, and that's to get a VPN service. For those of you who don't know what a VPN, it stands for Virtual Private Network, and what it does is simple. It creates a private internet connection for you through a public network. In other words, it makes it so your internet browser is completely protected from people recording your IP address, and it can make your browser show that you're in a different country. Well, why is that important? Well, it completely protects you from people trying to find out your location, target you for ads, or even some more nefarious things like stealing your identity. And it keeps your internet service provider from tracking your internet activity. If you were not aware, most ISPs or internet service providers are gonna track every single site you look at and everything you do online. 
you can keep them from doing this just by using a VPN. Additionally, you can watch TV shows, like I was saying, that are streaming in other countries other than your own. Literally everyone could benefit from having a VPN. Luckily, they are quite cheap, and this video's sponsor, NordVPN, is the absolute best provider of VPN services out there. You can actually get 68% off right now by following the link in the description of the video. This is an offer for my viewers, and it makes it so cheap, it's really kind of a no-brainer to have one if you use the internet. Check it out. Now back to the video. We do also have some news about additions to the production team, including a new actor and a new stunt coordinator and his team. So let's start with the announcement by Redanian Intelligence that Michael DeCruz has been announced in the role of Zahir for the Wheel of Time TV show. So he's best known for his work on the television shows Tyrant, Saracen, and EastEnders. According to Watt series, Michael is listed as waiting to film on his resume, which means that he's either set to be a part of the final two episodes of the season or he's been cast for season two. My guess would be that he's been cast for the last part of season one, but the character of Zaheer is not a name from the books. Now, this was not an official release from Amazon, so we don't know that this is 100% correct, and that Zaheer is not a fake name given for an audition, which has been so common with The Wheel of Time. He could be a Shinaran, he could be anything at this point. There's really not much that we can do but speculate. I'm curious who you all think Zaheer will be. The other major addition to the production team that's been announced is Jan Petrina as the stunt coordinator for The Wheel of Time. Jan has been a stuntman since the early 1990s and has worked on a lot of high profile projects like multiple Marvel Cinematic Universe movies like Captain America, Avengers, and Guardians of the Galaxy. He's also been on Game of Thrones, Carnival Row, Whiskey Cavalier, Solo, A Star Wars Story, and all kinds of other big blockbuster movies. He really has a really, really impressive resume. He's also brought on Merrick Svitek as his assistant stunt coordinator. Now, he's worked on Assassin's Creed, Snowpiercer, Legend of Tarzan, Carnival Row, and the upcoming Dune movie, and a bunch of other television and movie roles dating back to 2004. Additionally, Hanna Zvorska has been working on the Wheel of Time as a stunt woman as well, and she's been doing stunt work all the way back to the mid-90s, and has worked on productions like Jojo Rabbit, Spider-Man Far From Home, Troy, Van Helsing, Hellboy, Dune, and a number of other productions. Now, obviously, their previous work speaks for itself. This is yet another example of the production team hiring people with serious credentials and experience. Of course, stunt people don't determine the success of a show, but the pattern is here. They keep hiring people for all aspects of the show that are super high quality, they have a lot of substance, they've got a lot of experience. This is a show being run by professionals and they have the budget to pay them. Typically when you're seeing people brought on that have this level of success, the show is gonna do well, I hope. Typically when you see people brought on at this level of experience, it just says that they're doing things right. And the final piece of news that I wanna hit on in this episode is the leaked audition tapes and scripts from Redanian Intelligence. There were originally videos that showed these auditions on Vimeo, but they've since been taken down. However, the scripts are still available to read. And so I was on the dusty wheel a little bit more than a week ago when these dropped. And we had a long discussion about this subject if you'd like to see more on it. I'll have the, that video linked in the description of this video. But before diving into this, I do wanna give a disclaimer. Just because these are leaked audition scripts does not mean that these scripts are going to be in the show. Audition scripts are not always part of the real script, and there is nothing but speculation to pull from these. There is no confirmation that these are changes that we're going to see in the show, and we don't know that they're actually going to be in there. What we can do is speculate that if these scenes were real, what would they mean for the show, and what would they mean for the plot? The first of the leaked audition tapes was who we believe to be Leandrin. The name given in the scripts is Leona, but as with the other leaked audition scripts in the past, most of the names and locations have been changed to partially hide the identity and plot. Leandrin has been cast as Kate Flannery, but there are five scenes here that we get to read for the Leona audition, and so we're going to break those down one at a time. Let me go ahead and throw up the graphic here for scene one. Now, this is a very short scene, as you can see, and the reference to Mayara Shira which is the name that's been used in other clips uh, like this that we've been seeing. That's a reference to Moraine. The Naga Reborn is clearly a reference to the Dragon Reborn. This scene appears to refer to the capture of Logan Ablar as a false dragon. Now, obviously, this scene's existence in the show will be a departure from the books, as Moraine and Leandrin do not meet until the Great Hunt within the books, and this would imply that Moraine meeting Leandrin sometime during the Eye of the World. It also implies that Leandrin was a part of the group of Aes Sedai that captured Loghain, something that we don't know that happened in the books. This would be a change if we see Moraine meet those Aes Sedai transporting Loghain on their way to Camelin or on their way to Tarvalin. But let's take a look at the other scenes first and then come back to this idea. Now in scene two, as you can see, is a conversation among Leandrin, Moraine, again as Mayara, 
and another two Aes Sedai. They're discussing Loghain and his capture and how strong he is with the One Power. Now clearly the other Aes Sedai believe him to be the Dragon Reborn. Based on the context, we can guess that Celtron is Gildon, as that's the area that Loghain captured, uh, mostly in his stint as the Dragon Reborn. The Naga is again the dragon, and there seems to be an implication here that they should kill the Dragon Reborn rather than let him live. This is a sentiment that some people in the books have, but it's also a prophecy that the, they're going to need him to fight the Dark One. And I think most of the Aes Sedai know that, but then again, we don't know that Leandrin does know that or that she believes that as she's both Red and a Black Sister. A couple of other things on this scene. The Elaine mentioned here is certainly not Elaine Tricand. It's probably another Aes Sedai like Alana. Secondly, the scene also implies that Moraine has some extended stay with this group uh, that's transporting Loghain. But let's look at the next scene and then again, like I said, we'll come back to that. So again, scene three is a shorter scene again. Nady is a code word for Nynaeve and the other auditions that we've seen, so this is likely a conversation here between Nynaeve and Leandrin. Something that if it's in the story would be really interesting. I don't believe from the context here that this is taking place in the White Tower, but rather on the road with Loghain in tow again. This would seem to imply at least that Nynaeve is with Moraine as they meet the entourage of Aes Sedai accompanying Loghain. I love this conversation between Nynaeve and Leandrin primarily because it shows Nynaeve's animosity towards Moraine, and it potentially sets up Leandrin as someone sympathetic to Nynaeve, and allows the setup for events in the Great Hunt, so the girls might actually trust Leandrin before she betrays them. Scene four is another conversation that appears to show Leandrin explaining the workings of the White Tower to another person. The sects here are probably Aja's and Dretch Wars are probably the Trolloc Wars, which happened roughly 2000 years prior to the start of the story. It's unclear who the other people in the scene are, but it can be assumed that person one is from a small village like Emmons Field, as Leandrin makes reference to small villages knowing of the Ajas. Possible that this is Nynaeve again, but who knows, because it's not named. The last scene of Leandrin is an argument between Leandrin and some other Aes Sedai about what to do with Loghain. Asgard, as mentioned here, is probably Erangil or some other port city on the river. The Stone Temple is obviously the White Tower. And this appears to be a discussion about whether it makes sense to bring Loghain all the way to the White Tower for trial or just to go ahead and gentle him. There's an implication that it's really difficult to continue holding him and he's either tried to escape or he's been giving them problems to the point that they just might want to deal with it now rather than taking him to trial. Now, WattSeries.com uncovered another set of audition tapes for Egwene. Now, Egwene was already cast as Madeline Madden. And there are three audition scenes here for us to take a look at. Starting with the first scene, this appears to be a scene between Rand and Egwene, and from the context, it looks like it's going on in the two rivers. They seem to be setting up the relationship between Rand and Egwene a little stronger here than in the books, and the next scene seems to indicate the same thing. In scene two, we see another interaction between Rand and Egwene, and them discussing the possibility of Egwene becoming the next wisdom. They talk of Nady, which again is the code word for Nynaeve, and Egwene possibly being able to read the signs sort of like Nynaeve can. Now the last scene appears to be between Egwene and Moraine and it takes place after the ferry sinks at Tarn Ferry. This appears to be part of the conversation that takes place when Moraine first teaches Egwene about the power, when they stop at the little grove that Lan had kind of set up before they came to the two rivers. We already have leaked information that Master Hightower, the ferryman, dies while trying to save his ferry and the Emmons Fielders blame Moraine for this. Now this appears to be part of a discussion that happens after that. Moraine teaches Egwene here about the Three Oaths, or as Moraine refers to them here, the Pacts. So what do all these scenes mean? Well, first of all, I think that the fact that the last scene talks of the ferryman dying, and that scene is actually something that we know is going to be changed from the books, I think these scripts are probably more likely to actually be a part of the story. So making that assumption for a minute, what can we glean from these leaks? Well, First, it appears that Moraine is going to run into the party that is transporting Loghain to Camelin or Tarvalin during the events of the first season. Now, I think this is probably less of a change than you might think, and I think it actually adds to the story. Matt Hatch from The Dusty Wheel was the first one that pointed this out to me, but during the Eye of the World, once the group is separated from each other in Shadar Logoth, Moraine, Lan, and Nynaeve's time is really just spent chasing and gathering the kids, as he put it. There isn't much going on there. Having the group with Nynaeve, Moraine, and Lan run into the Aes Sedai for a time during the story, it's going to add some politics, some tension. It's going to add to the scope of the story uh, to kind of make the world a little bigger in the first season. It also allows for the setup of plot lines that are going to run into the next season if the Aes Sedai have seen Moraine in her journeys and they've met Nynaeve. Again, I think it's going to set Nynaeve up to trust Leandrin more. 
So when she takes them through the ways and gives them to the Shan Chan, that's an even bigger betrayal. So I think this can be a really great addition to the story, especially with the setup for Leandrin early on. As I mentioned earlier, I got into this topic much more on the Dusty Wheel a few weeks back. So if you want to see more on that, I will have that video linked in the description. The last thing I'll mention is Min from much earlier in the video. I think it's clear that we're probably either not going to get Berlon or we're not going to get Min in Berlon. It seems like she might be introduced towards the end of the first season, potentially in Faldara. Now, does that mean that she's Shinarin in the story? Not necessarily. Uh, she could be with the other Aes Sedai, or she could have been stationed there by Moraine. There's a number of angles that they can go with this, but changing her story a little bit does allow them to give the character more than a glorified cameo in season one. So in general, what do you think of the news and the audition tapes? Do these things make you more excited, less excited? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure to also check out the link for NordVPN and the great deal going on for the VPN services, which we all should have. Check out my Patreon if you want to support what we do here and be a part of the more than 100 people supporting the channel and the greatblight.com website. We're working towards hiring some people to help with the site more regularly and create content for all of you. And if you want to support us there, Patreon is the absolute best way to do it. That link is in the description of the video as well. Like this video if you liked it, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. Guys, thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free crying. Tinker, oh dear, Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?